Welcome, it is February 4th and I have not done an update in a while so I'm excited to take you guys around the garden. It has been really warm the last uh, month really and so spring has totally sprung and come early but we have a frost in the forecast so uh, it'll be interesting to see hopefully it doesn't turn into a freeze and it is a windy gusty day the the front the cold front is starting to come in so I apologize for the uh, the audio but um, we'll see how it goes and there's just there's so much to share because it's been a long time I I probably uh, will try and cover a good bit but you know can't cover everything so we've got our, our first our, our plum blossoms um, this is that golf beauty that's always earlier than the others it's like you know it's not going to get pollinated citrus has been pretty abundant this year it's been a good season um, probably the main updates though is just taking things out so um, right over here I had a pineapple guava I took out of the ground that was right there to give space to the plum and I took it to the park and then all through this area in the back there there were pecan trees that came out here's that other area where a lot of pecan came out like three or four big trees and so the hay bales I found hay bales for free um, an old decoration from you know Thanksgiving and so I'm planting squash into hay bales the sticks are to keep the rabbits and the chickens off of them I was collecting some sign wood this morning I'm just trying to knock everything off of the list um, a big area of change I did post some of this on Instagram is back here here comes the sun. So this new project with all the urbanite, I don't know if I really documented it well, but um, creating a big planter for avocado, maybe star fruit, and just using up all that concrete that was in the driveway. So did a lot of cuts, and um, yeah, that was kind of fun. That's calendula I need to harvest as well. I've been um, taking care, a lot of revisits to all of the trees. So like. That orange back there, the chickens had just dug everything away from the trunk. So bringing in lots of uh, soil and also leaves um, to keep everything covered. And then we've got more urbanites back here. Um, so that cave is actually, was a really big move. So you see that big flat top. So this area has changed a lot over the last month or two. Um, it's been fun to move around some concrete play with the resources available i don't take you guys back here often do i um, but yeah you can kind of see the steps and the platforms a little meditation uh, point right there and then um, a little little pond and garden elephant the elephant's is important totem what else is new what else is new so <laughs> Been eating on um, those beauty berries. I'm trying to think, it's it's just a lot cleaner and clearer. We'll see a lot of blueberries blossoming, starting to blossom. I've got blossoms over here on the avocado. Well, not open blossoms, but it's starting. And here comes the sun. There we go. So hopefully our upcoming cold front doesn't knock out the avocados. And let's see, lots of blueberries in blossom, lots of bees visiting them. It's like, hey, one walked right up to me. So bees are just super expanding, busy right now. I've been enjoying the blood oranges on the tree. George is coming to defend his pond. The ducks have been, oops, sorry, enjoying the water. So say a quick hey to them. Hey, George. He knows my voice, the video, like when I talk on camera, he always comes over. <laughs> he said, don't talk like that in my garden. I think he knows I'm distracted and that's his chance to, to pick on me. Yep, he's following. So over here, this is kind of a, gonna be a changing zone. The main change is actually there was a huge falsa berry. Y'all remember that maybe. So the falsa got ripped out like over a month ago. And then I kind of pulled this around to um, plant something. It's probably going to be blueberry because it needs to be something small. You know, going to have grape up over the top. I always like to bring you guys over 
to be watch for a little bit. It's a good way to, um, you know, be watching is good for the soul and they definitely help you connect with the uh, energy of the time of year. So, see some pollen going in there. See some confusion as one's flying into the side of the camera. <laughs> All right. Most of the other citrus has finished, but the kumquats are ripening like crazy. So that's Miwa, and uh, some of the others are becoming ripe. And like we saw over there, just tons of blueberry blossoms and busy bees. Look at that, it's like immediately find a bee. Validating the energy of this time of year. That's a new colony, um, removal. So let's see what else, what else. Just to feel for, you know, what the garden feels like. The leaf bags are, new bags are coming in and old bags are getting broken open. That's a huge thing that happens for me in winter time. So you have all that fertility you can move around from the older bags. And then, um, you know, just keep on collecting them because here in Houston they're still falling. There's some of the blossoms on that fantastic. I did, um, oh yeah, we just walked past um, some new planting in the hay bales, but here's one. So it might be too early, but since this was free, this is just this beautiful resource that I could have been paid to haul those off. They're so rotten. But um, sticking tomato transplants in and then some rabbit protection for sure, some trellis to let it get big. But got to get your tomatoes in early, so it's definitely a tomato planting time of year. It's a uh, low quat ripening time of year, so here's the fruit set starting to swell out. That was definitely, you know, good food for the bees about a month ago. All right, so more kumquat, more flushing on blueberries, but we're coming over here because this was another big change. I took out that mimosa tree. That was um, a pretty heavy on my heart thing because I just appreciated it so much. Sorry for the wind, but... Um, but anyway, I took it out to pump more light into these two persimmon trees, and it felt like this energy of, you know, being decisive and cleansing and that kind of goodness. And I also took out a Santa Rosa plum, a big old plum tree that was right back there where that brush pile is. And same, same kind of reasoning. Basically, once the Santa Rosa plum leafed out, put a lot of shade ooh -wee, on this avocado. And so um, this avocado should make it through a light freeze just fine and then it's going to go a lot more growth, you know, it's going to have just a lot more sunlight from that big gap right there is what I just created. And I even plan on cutting on the live oak up above. This is one of those, it's a, it's a subtle thing, but sometimes you got to be hard and hack and sometimes you got to take out entire trees. All right, so here's my winter garden. It's uh, calendula and kale. I might have documented it. I don't know. I planted it probably only a couple months ago from transplants. So maybe just a month even. It's growing fast. Lots of kale going to the chickens. I like to nibble through the fence. But it's growing fast. It's growing well. And we're going to come say hi to the ladies. Hey, y'all. So Makuna and Hoot here are becoming like number one and number two lap chicken. Very vocal, communicative, good energy. And I want you guys to help me. I've got a treat in my hand. All right. I want you to look at her face right here if you can. I'll have to take a picture. But um, she had a wound and she has a little bump on the side kind of like a wart and so if you can uh, help with diagnosis whether it's something to worry about or not the wound on the tip of her beak there it seems to be healing pretty well but anyway let's uh, say hi to everybody and look who's right back 
I like that bird. They get their tortillas. Hey, Bertha. Hi. Hi, Hoop. Anyway, I got to show y'all something else. So, it was just coming in to say hi. It was just coming in to say hi. That's a good bird. Hear her talk. Okay, so the other main thing that I got to show is this mess over here. I really wanted to have this finished before doing an update. It's kind of like why I didn't do one last month. I was like, oh, I'm going to have it all finished. But no, it's never finished. Life is never finished. It's going to be a little gathering space, you know, a place to run the chiminea and hang out with some benches around the side. So I'll try and do a, a better documentation <laughs> when it's finished. At this garden, it is growing well. It is still dry and still unirrigated. I have the pipe for bringing water over, but I never laid out tea tape. Um, mostly it's getting harvested individual leaves to go to the chickens. And of course, the chickens are coming in every once in a while. That's where all this digging was from. But what was really beautiful to me is I have seen the rabbit in here multiple times. It just, you know, it can hop through this fence, no problem. And the rabbit is leaving stuff alone. It's so crazy. Like, I, you know, I don't know. There's some power in relationship. Um, you can see the bees working on bok choy flowers and this is all the broccoli. It's gonna be making heads soon and some turnips that never got thinned because, you know, whatever. But lettuce is ready to harvest. Others are ready to harvest. Garden is growing well. Beautiful day. Oh, over here. So I'm gonna jump. Oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. Wow. Y'all know Sweet Olive? This is putting out some, some scent. Wow, you're really strong. Um, so I wanted to bring you over to show you the white sapote that has set some fruit and hopefully this freeze is light enough. Um, so it just was in full, full bloom. This is its really its first year to do it, you know, so thanks for mild winters. Um, and I even, I've been considering, so this, I don't know if you can see, this is um, Eliagnus, our uh, Russian olive and i planted it it's uh because it's edible like you can see let's find them here they are so this is russian olive fruit they are ripe when they turn kind of reddish um, and they're sweet they just have one large seed in the middle but sweet all around the outside so it's a fruiting plant you know it'll it'll feed the birds and i also know that they love to climb trees so it's not really a vine i don't know what you call these kind of um you know, understory trees that see the big arching canes. It actually has like, <laughs> the way it structures it branches is for climbing. So it's up there. Like that's Ely Agnes up at like 30 feet, almost 25 feet. But it's got the yellow flag and the yellow flag means consider removal. And I have, you know, Ely Agnes is in landscapes. It's not like the fruit is really of, you know, quality, so. I think it's gonna get taken out, especially after this freeze, after this makes it through winter, just to get more sunlight onto this um, white sapote. So, mainly just wanted to show you. The white sapote is looking good. It's healing from the, um, look at that. That's from that really hard freeze, 2018. So, this whole side of the branch, you know, was fully exposed, dead, damaged. So, it's compartmentalizing and growing fast and Oh my gosh, has it set a lot of fruit. So here's another crazy share worthy. <laughs> I think, I mean, I took pictures of it. This is really early. This is bad idea. This is a cocktail grapefruit and blooming in the first week of February or about to bloom. Let's see, this one's almost open. It'll be right around that freeze when they open, unfortunately. So I don't know what set it off. It could be, you know, it's a little bit warmer, shadier. It could be this full tank of water, a little bit of thermal mass, but um, it's a really early bloomer now. Um, it'll learn something. It'll learn its lesson this year. Lots of oranges, not really lots, but oranges still on the tree for all the sweet oranges. And I'm gonna take you guys to the back 
area. There's a few things to see back there. So I did just post about how this is also crazy. Suriname cherry blooming and just blooming non-stop. I mean, this thing has made fruit non-stop. So really hope it can do okay in this coming freeze. I might throw a sheet over it. But I'm bringing you back here because I took out some big trees here as well. There's a big old oak tree right here. I just popped that out of the ground. <laughs> There's the chunk of it. So I was gonna make a video on you know how to remove a tree and, and get that stump out, but the camera died in the middle, so I'll just do a little documenting here. And then what else? The other tree that came out was the um, the pear tree that was right here. You know, it was one where spacing it just was too close. So you know that was probably eight feet apart spacing pear to loquat and lesson learned. You know, not that I didn't know better from the beginning, but um, hopefully you guys can learn from that. Don't make the same mistake. Don't go and plant your trees eight feet apart. You know, that's just silly. So now it has you know more space for that low quad and it's gonna grow well. And then back here, I always like to come and pay homage to the avocado, to this big beauty who's also blooming who just is so strong. I mean, whew, I like this tree, so it's good to hang out with this tree and been sending it some good energy, but also some good, you know, fresh mulch TLC and working on finishing up the projects. All right, you guys. So I'm sure there were some things I could have shared and forgot, but um, that's the gist of what the garden is like right now and what's been going on. And I hope you enjoyed it. I will catch y'all next time. Peace.